Welcome everyone to the Virtual Excel Academy. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are. We're with you too. We're here for Virtual Excel Academy. It's a Monday and we're going to be featuring Cody LaPlante with Google Products, with JAWS, NVDA, or Chromebox. Here with us, our hostesses are Charlotte Cushman from Paths to Literacy, Perkins and Texas School for the Blind. Hello, Charlotte. Hi, everyone. Welcome. And also Leanne Grillot from direct, the Director of National Outreach Services from American Printing House for the Blind. Hello, everyone. And I am Cheryl Kamehana, and I am a professor from Cal State University, Los Angeles. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are excited that you're here. If you can take a moment in your chat window to tell us who you are and where are you from and how are you this morning, we would love to hear from you. Just a one announcement today, we are still looking for pictures. So if you have a photograph of you in front of a computer or with you and your student or child in front of a computer, we would love to see it and feature you on one of our opening slides. So send those pictures over. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, Kelly. Welcome, Julie. Welcome, Elizabeth. Welcome, Kyle and Jezebel. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Rita. Hello, Sarah. We are so glad you're here. Hello, Mina. Glad you're back with us. Giselle's, hello again, welcome back. And I'm gonna turn it over to Cody for our wonderful session today. Thank you, Cody. Yeah, hey everybody, it's great to see everybody. I'm glad that you uh, are chosen to join us today. Um, we have a question of the day today and it's mainly uh, for me um, to know what to kind of talk about today. But the question of the day is what type of, or what screen reader are you using? So today we're kind of going over JAWS, NVDA, or Chromevox, and I want to know which one of those are you using, okay? So go ahead and put that in the chat box. Which one of those are you using? All right. Lots of JAWS coming in, a couple Chromevox. Okay. Another awesome. Chromebox, still lots of JAWS. There is an NVDA. Oh, another NVDA. Awesome. Uh, a little bit of voiceover. <laughs> and so, and okay. Cody, just okay. so you know, some of those are teachers and some of them are students. That's so right. So students. Make a distinction you might want to ask. Yeah, students. I want to know, students, what screen reader are you using? So students, are you using NVDA, JAWS, or Chromebox? Okay. Just students. Cool. So it sounds like, Leanne, it sounds like a lot of JAWS still. There was quite a bit of JAWS. I'm seeing some NVDA okay. student using JAWS, uh, mainly NVDA, but I can use JAWS if needed. Oh, voiceover at home. <laughs> I, like, I like the person that said I can use and I use NVDA mainly, but I can use JAWS as well. That's really awesome because you know what? You're going to have times when you, if you're a PC user, at least you're going to have times when you're going to have to use JAWS and you have times when you have to use NVDA. Cool. So that's good for me to know. Um, I also want to kind of ask in the chat box for you guys to know um, is the big question of the day that I want to think about is what is Google Suite? Now this is called um, screen readers with Google products, but today we're going to be talking about Google Suite because there's so many different types of Google products, right? There's Android phones, there's Google Chrome, there's Google the search engine, but today we're working on Google Suite. What does that mean? What is Google Suite? Whatever you think, put it in the chat box and then we'll kind of go over what does it actually mean, Google Suite. Perfect. All right, let's see what you guys think. What is Google Suite? And as you do that, I'm going to make sure that I'm sharing my screens. I see classroom, Google applications, I don't know, classroom and everything added on, apps like slides. Google Docs, cool. voice there typing, screen reader, spreadsheet, Google Docs. I don't know, not sure. Okay, so there's lots of I don't knows, which is great that we're going over this. Um, because as I said, there's lots of different things that Google does, right? Google is a huge company and they do, they have a whole search engine. They also make Chromebooks, they make computers, but Google Suite is a group of applications. Just think about, about your iPhone or your Android and you have apps on your phone, but Google Suite is apps that are on the internet. So anybody can get to them on the internet. 
And some of those that we're going to talk about today are Google Drive, Google Docs, all right? These are some of the apps in Google Suite. Google Classroom, Google Sheets, all of these are in Google Suite. Now, a lot of people think that um, you kind of have to learn all of these apps individually. Like, I have to learn Google Docs, I have to learn Google Sheets, and I have to learn Google Slides. But today, we are going to start from kind of the ground zero, the home base of Google Suite, which is Google Drive. Tell me, what do you think Google Drive is? What is Google Drive? What does that mean? And as, as we do that, I'm going to turn on JAWS just to make sure that I am ready for you all. Let and just start. to clarify, we want students to write in the chat. Students. Uh, not, and not Absolutely. the TBIs. Thank you. Pause manual. Space. Speech on. All right. So I have JAWS on. And what is Google Drive, students? What does it mean? Storage, a place where you can share Ooh. files. Yep. Storage. Absolutely, absolutely. Whoever said storage, a place where you can share files, that is absolutely correct. What I tell my students is, um, if you think about like a flash drive or a thumb drive, right? That's, that's the reason why Google Drive has its name. It's a place to store all of your files, which is why I'm saying it's the home base of Google Drive or of Google Suite, because that's where we're gonna kind of start. If we start by opening a Google Doc, we want to make sure we're starting from Google Drive so it's nice and organized, okay? So that's what we're going to start with today. Now, I want to show you guys, I want to tell you guys a couple of things before we get started. Um, first of all, things to know about Google with a screen reader is that Google has its own set of key commands. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, when you think about different screen readers, right? JAWS has its own set of key commands. Um, NVDA has its own set of key commands. Chromevox has its own set of key commands. But Google, when we use a Google app, that's a totally different set of key commands. Now, what does that mean? That means that every single screen reader accesses Google with the same set of key commands. We are all going to be using Google key commands. It doesn't matter if you're using JAWS. It doesn't matter if you're using NVDA. It doesn't matter if you're using Chromevox or VoiceOver. We're all going to be using Google key commands. So that's really exciting. Now, the reason why that's really exciting is especially if you are an NVDA user or you are a JAWS user or a voiceover user, guess what? Now, when you learn how to use Google Drive, you can now be a whatever user as long as you're using Google Drive. So that's really exciting, okay? Now, like I said, we're gonna be using Google key commands, um, but that just means that if you're using a, a screen reader like NVDA or JAWS, we just kind of have to get JAWS or NVDA out of the way so that we can use Google key commands, okay? So just keep that in your mind. I'm gonna tell you more about that in a second, okay? Now, how today is gonna to work is I love doing, um, well, there's gonna be four main parts and it depends on how much time we, we use up, but four main parts that we're gonna talk about with Google Drive today. The first part is um, we're gonna learn how to set it up. So we're gonna to get to our Google Drive, we're gonna set up our Google Drive for success. The second one is we're gonna navigate, learn how to navigate Google Drive the third one is we're going to learn how to create files and folders. And the fourth is we're going to learn how to open um, files and folders in Google Drive. Okay. And then with each of those steps, all right, we're going to be doing a teach, do, teach, do progression. Like I'm going to teach one of those steps. So first I'm going to teach you how to set up Google Drive. And then in the do section, you have two options. The first option is that uh, we, you can either do the challenge that I give you. So I'm going to give you a challenge and say, I want you to now follow along and do what, what the challenge is. Or if you just want to sit back and listen and chill, then I'm going to ask you a really cool like thinking level question. Something that makes you really think about how Google and how screen readers kind of work together. Okay, so those are your options. Um, awesome. So this is also going to be a lot of information and know that my students, when I do this, this is like four lessons of information. So if you at some point are like, oh my gosh, this is so much, definitely take a chill pill, go back and watch the YouTube video um, and just, yeah, we'll, we'll relax and have fun. Okay. Um, but we're going to be going over a lot of information. So no big deal. All right. So let's get set up. I realize that you're just staring at my screen. So let me, let me let you uh, <laughs> look at something else and let's uh, open up. Google Chrome. So I have JAWS on right now. JAWS, uh, I have the speech off. So let me turn that speech, speech back on. And I'm going to open up um, Google Chrome, which is the best browser, the best internet browser that we can use to, to use Google Drive, because guess what? It's a Google product, right? So the way that I would do this is I would press the Windows key 
to open the start menu. It's going to sound like this. Cortana. All right. And then I'm going to type in Google Chrome. G. G. Google uh, Chrome app. It's so smart. It guesses what I want. I actually Escape. have a Google Chrome. Uh, and then you press enter. I have a Google Chrome window open and ready to go. Tab. So I'm just going to open that from my taskbar. Okay. So I'm in a new tab. That's Google Chrome. Now, this is a really great question that I get is, do I have to have a Google account to do this? Yes, you do. But uh, for either students or TVIs or teachers out there, Alert from Colin. Oh, let me turn off the speech. Space. Speech on. Um, from anybody out there, know that sometimes your school district or your agency already has a Google account set up for you. So definitely look into that. Or you can do all of this with your personal Google account as well. All right. But I'm going to uh, go up to the address bar and I'm going to go right to Google Drive. To get to the address bar is Control L or Alt D. I'm going to be using Control L today. All right. I'm in the address bar. Oh, let me turn speech back on. Full speech. Um, and then I'm going to type in the URL of Google Drive. Now for Drive, it's going to be drive.google.com. And this is in kind of a pattern, okay? So for docs, it's docs.google.com. For sheets, it's sheets.google.com. Forms, it's forms.google.com. But for Drive, drive.google.com. And it already knows that I'm going to go there because I go to Drive a lot, okay? So I can type it in. R I V E, or I can just know that it guessed my uh, that it wants to go to Drive, and I can just press Enter. Enter blank. My Drive dash Google alert from Colin. Okay. Get notified. Ooh, thank you. And uh, so now I'm in Google Drive. So that's awesome. So if you're following along with me right now, you should be in your Google Drive. If you're not following along with me, that is totally okay. Just sit back, relax, chill, and listen. Um, all right, so let's get set up. The first thing that we're going to do is get set up. We want to make sure that we are set up for success in Google Drive. Space, speech on. There we go, speech off. And uh, set up for success. And we have to do two different things. The first thing is, like I said, we're using those Google key commands, right? So think about um, JAWS NV or NVDA being um, kind of like right there with you when you're navigating the internet. It is right there with you, ready to take commands and bring you somewhere else. If you're familiar with using the internet, for example, if you want to use quick keys with JAWS or NVDA and you press H to get to the next heading, JAWS or NVDA is right there. And when you press that H, it helps you get to the next heading. But we don't want to do that. We want JAWS or NVDA to get out of the way, all right, and let us use our Google key commands. I'm not going to get too much into this, but I do want to show you. Um, oh, well, yeah, I don't want to get too much into this. Um, but what I'm going to tell you is first, JAWS, the way to do this is to turn off something called the virtual PC cursor. The virtual PC cursor, very quickly, just let's get JAWS out of the way and it lets us use our Google key command. So if you're a JAWS user, I'm going to turn on speech and you are going to do the JAWS key, which on a laptop is caps lock, on a desktop it's insert, so the JAWS key and Z. And that turns off the virtual PC cursor, gets JAWS out of the way lets us use our Google key commands. So let me try that now. Full speed. Right. Use awesome. And it actually, it turns the virtual PC cursor off a lot of times because JAWS is super smart. But let me just show you, right? Use virtual PC right. cursor off. Now the virtual off. PC cursor is off. Again, that's caps lock on a laptop or insert on a desktop in Z, okay? Now, what if you're using NVDA, Space. right? Speech if you're on. using NVDA, all you have to do is switch modes. So it's the NVDA key, which is caps lock or insert and space, okay, NVDA key space. If, if when you hear um, one sound, you're gonna be in focus mode, which means you're good to go. If you hear another sound, you're gonna be in browse mode, which means you're not good to go. No, if you're using NVDA and something's not working in Google Drive, all you gotta do is caps lock space or insert space and switch modes and you're good to go, okay? So that's the first thing, all right? Now don't do it yet. Remember, we're still in teach mode. You're gonna have a chance to do this in a second, okay? But the second thing that we have to do the, um, to get set up for success is right now our Google Drive is in a grid view. We just want to change that to a list view. Because if you're a screen reader user, you know that lists are awesome and menus are awesome and grids are just a little bit more difficult. So all I'm going to do there is press the V key for view and it's going to switch from view, grid view to list view. Alert from my Sobella Ver. Press V. V, loading, change to list view, main region, awesome. name reverse sort. Go. Okay. Alert turn from Neil McKen space. And now on. we've, that's our first teach section. So we only did two things. I know that was a lot. We only did two things. The first thing was we got JAWS or NVDA out of the way. 
Now for your Chrome, for your Chrome Vox users, you do not have to do that because you're already using the Google product. So that's really awesome. So JAWS or NVDA users, all you gotta do is get JAWS or NVDA out of the way. And also everybody needs to switch it from grid view to list view with the V key. So your challenge, as you might've guessed, is to do those two things. Now, if you are somebody that is just listening and you'll go and do it later, then I got a question for you. My question for you is why do you think that Google made its own key commands, right? All these screen readers have all these key commands. Why do you think Google made its own set of key commands? Now remember, now know that the, there is no right answer for this. This is just me asking you what you think and just think in your head, why, why do you think they did that? Okay, and put your answers in the chat box. We're gonna give you a couple of minutes just to sit on that question or to do the challenge and then we'll come back and do our next teach section. Okay, cool. Um, Leanne, you got any questions for me as we as we hear from as as everybody um, does the yeah one of the common um, ones is how did you turn jaws on and off? <laughs> so this is the question that I got last time as well. So the way that you turn off jaws's speech is you're going to use the jaws key in space. It's a layered key command actually, which is what we're gonna we're gonna do this in in a second is talk about layered versus modified key commands. But all you do is is jaws key space and then press S S. So it's kind of a complicated key command. JAWS key space SS. For NVDA, it's NVDA key S, okay? Um, and again, if you don't know what the NVDA or the JAWS key is, the JAWS key or the NVDA key is caps lock or insert. It depends on how your settings are set up, okay? It's either caps lock or insert. So if you're trying to do it right now, try caps lock space and you should hear this sound, all right? If you don't, then that means that your, your JAWS key is insert or the other one, you know? Um, cool. Any other can, questions? Yes. Can you repeat your question one more time? What are, mm -hmm. what are they supposed to be thinking about and then writing? Yeah. What, why do you think that Google made its own set of key commands? So we've talked about how um, we need to get NVDA or JAWS kind of out of the way so that it doesn't confuse uh, NVDA or JAWS key commands with Google key commands. Why do you think Google did that? Why do you think Google made a whole different set of key commands? It kind of just did its own thing, kind of went rogue, right? Did its own thing. Why do you think Google did that? And how did you change the grid to list view? The V key. So if you press V, and I'll do it in a second, actually, again. Ooh, wow, that was a weird noise. There we go. <laughs> Full S. Space. Speech on demand. There we go. So if Full you do speech. the V Alert. key, all it's going to do is switch it back and forth between grid view and list view. Alert from V loading. Now change grid to grid view. view. V loading. Now change list to list view. view. Alert from the space. Okay. Speech on. All right. We got any more questions? Uh, no, you've got a couple guesses though. All right. Let's let's hear it. Okay, because it's its own company, because they have their own screen reader, I think they did it to make sure commands were universal and could be used by many people. I think it made the, uh, made, they made them so people can just practice typing in Google Chrome. Uh-huh. I like those answers. I really like those answers. I think that it's probably, um, there's a lot of things that I think we're on the right track. I don't know. I'm not Google, so I can only take as many guesses as you guys do. But yeah, I, I, the one thing that I love about it is like, I, like you guys said, you can use it by any screen reader. That's really cool. So it's kind of nice that they went, went a little rogue, huh? Um, cool. Okay, so we're ready you, to go. Yeah, so for those of you doing the challenge, we're just going to kind of keep going here. Um, and we'll move on to our next teach section, which is navigate. So if you can see on my screen, we got a lot of different, we have two different areas on our screen here um, that we're gonna be using. But before we kind of jump into navigate, we wanna talk about how Google key commands are a little bit different than a lot of the key commands that we use with NVDA or JAWS. And the main way that they're different is that Google key commands are layered instead of modified. You might hear some of those, those uh, what I just said is might be kind of a trigger for you. Like, oh, like modifier keys. Yeah, absolutely. So the difference between layered and modified key commands is a little bit different. And to do this, I'm going to show you a, a video. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know a lot about me, um, I actually run an online uh, professional development company that kind of teaches this stuff all the time. So the way that I'm getting here, if you want to watch this video yourself, go back and watch this video yourself. I went to my website, itvision.com. 
All right, and we can put that, um, I can send that to uh, Cheryl and Le uh, Leanne and uh, Charlotte. And I'm I've scrolling put it down in already. and I'm clicking on our, our TV Eyes at Home series and it's a YouTube series, okay? And in that series, I do a little bit of this explanation. I'm gonna show you that now, okay? Leanne, you're good? Did you, did you wanna say something? We're good, though I did have someone say that they were using JAWS and pressing V, the letter V as in Victor, and nothing happened. If, if you are pressing V and nothing happened, that's a great question. If you're pressing V and nothing happened, it's probably because that first step, um, something happened with that first step where you, you didn't get JAWS out of the way. So try, if you're using JAWS, try getting the PC cursor off, which is the JAWS key in Z, caps lock Z or insert Z, and then try that V key again. But that's a really great question. That's a really um, common thing to happen is that PC cursor being, being on instead of off, okay? Um, yeah, so this is, I'm just going to show a, um, a clip of this video. Please let me know, um, uh, people in the, in the panelists, if you, if something's wrong with the video, like you can't hear it and I can just do the explanation, but I'm going to show you this video and then we're going to do a little bit of an explanation. What's the difference between layered key commands and modified key commands. Okay. So here we go. In our Google key commands, right? These are going to be layered key commands, which means instead of holding down control and then pressing C right, like we would in a Windows or an NVDA key command, we are going to press one key and then the other. So we're not holding down any modifier keys and then pressing a key. We're doing one key let go and then another key let go. And to get to our list view, those two keys are going to be G then L. So press G real quick and then press L real quick and let's see what happens, Katrina. G L. Beautiful. And now we're in okay, our list view. So that's kind of just a really quick Ooh, okay. There we go. Now, Katrina, this is a really quick um, intro to the difference between layered and modified key commands. Okay. So the example I used was Control C, right? Control C is to to copy, right? In a in a modified key command like Control C, we're holding down Control and then pressing C at the same time. Whereas now we're going to be using layered key commands, which means we're going to press one key, let go, and then another key and let go. All right. In the video, I showed you how to get between these two areas, right? We have our list view in the center, which has all of our files and folders, and our navigation view on the, on the side. And I transfer from the navigation view to the list view, all right? And I'm gonna show you kind of just the, the example that I used in the video. So I'm gonna turn on my speech, and I'm gonna press G, L, as in I'm pressing G and letting go, and then pressing L and letting go. Let's try it. So I'm gonna do Full speed. GL. GL main region name reverse and sort direction. And you see how Jaws said GL? That means that I pressed it, let go, pressed L, let go. Okay. So um, in the second one, you do the teach section. Definitely try that layered key command, pressing G and pressing L really quick right after it. Okay. So that's gonna be in a second. Not yet. The final thing that I want to tell you in this teach section is the two areas. Space, speech on speech off is the two areas. If you can see on my screen, um, there are two two different areas, right? We have our main content region, our list region, all right, which is where all of our files and folders will exist in Google Drive. And then on the side, there's a skinny little bar. It's like a sidebar. And that's the navigation area. And that's where all of our main areas of drive are going to be. For example, right now I'm in my drive. If somebody shares something with you, you have to go over to the navigation section and go to share with me. I don't need you to know kind of what that does, but I do want you to get used to switching back and forth from the list view, that main area to the navigation area. Now, before we go into our do section, I wanna tell you the key commands, but I want you guys to give me a little bit of participation here. So in the video, I told you to, to get from anywhere in drive to the list view is G L and that's go to list, go to list. Now to get to the navigation section, what do you think the key command is gonna be? If go to list is G L, what do you think navi go to navigation is gonna be? Write, it, write that in the chat box to see if we, get, if we can predict the pattern. Is there a space between the G and the L or is it just G L? Just G L, just G let go, L let go. Okay, your guesses are H N, G N, N L. Absolutely, 
G, whoever said GN, absolutely. It's go to navigation, GN. Just like go to list is GL, go to navigation is GN. So I'm gonna demonstrate that real quick and then we'll move on to our do section. All right, so I'm gonna turn speech on here. Full speech. There we go. I'm gonna go, right now, remember I went to the list area. I'm gonna to go to the navigation section by just doing GN. Here we go. GN, navigation region. And of course, to get back to the list view, GL main region name reverse sort direction. All right, awesome. So that's the that's all you really Space. need to do. That's your on demand. Let me. There we go. That's all you really need to do. That's your challenge. Okay. So if you if you um are gonna do the t challenge, all you need to do is practice those layered key commands. Do GL to get to list. GN to get to navigation. Do that a couple of times, just so you understand how to navigate back and forth. If you're gonna do the question, my next question that I have for you is why do you think that Google decided to use layered key commands, right? That press and let go, press and let go over modified key commands, all right? Why do you think that they chose to use these layered key commands over the modified key commands? And um, now I guess um, as you guys do the challenge and, and answer the question in the chat box, Leanne, do we have any um, other questions or any clarifications that we have? Um, do you have to turn off virtual cursor for NVDA? I think that's what they meant. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great question. No, you don't um, have to turn off the virtual cursor for NVDA. The, what really, the, the, the longer answer as to why you don't have to do that is because um, NVDA turns off the virtual cursor for you when you switch modes, which is what I told you, like, so the, the caps lock or the NVDA key in space, that switches modes, all right? What happens there is that virtual cursor gets turned off automatically when you do that. So that's a great question. Gotcha. Um, how does my NVDA mute sometimes? And, and then how do I unmute it? Sure. So to, to do what I'm doing where I'm turning on and off the speech, the, the way to do that in NVDA is the NVDA key and S. So that's caps lock or insert and S. Okay. And one more, you have some people who are really able to see your cursor better because you happen to have two cursors, one kind of floating and trailing. How did you do that? Why did you do that? That's a great question. Um, I think that's just a lag in Zoom. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> so that's a really great question. Wow. I wish I did that on purpose. I would love to take the credit for that, but I did not. Um, so... Thanks, Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've got some answers about your sure, let's why. Hear uh, let's let's hear see. Uh, can you use one hand so that it's much easier? I don't know. I think it's easier. Uh, layered commands might be more accessible to people who cannot hold two keys at one time. Oh, okay. Further accessibility in case someone can't hold two keys at once. So, hmm. Yeah, really great uh, answers, really great uh, uh, guesses. I, I think. And I guess, I, again, I don't know because I'm not Google. I don't know any of the answers to this, but I think it probably is, um, less, doesn't conflict as much with NVDA or JAWS, if that makes sense. So because it's totally different, there's not gonna be as much conflict, but that's, again, that's only my guess. That's, that's my answer in the chat box. So I'm not actually sure of that, okay? <laughs> Cool, so um, hopefully those of you that did the challenge were successful in navigating between our two areas. We'll move on to our third um, teach section, which is about creating documents um, or folders, okay? Creating files or folders. And this is where we kind of branch out to the rest of Google Suite, okay? Um, so this is how we create like a Google Doc or a Google Sheet or a Google Form. Um, and uh, so that's what we're going to do, okay? So if you can see the screen, and I'm glad that my cursor is very visible. If you can see the screen, I'm going to move my cursor up to the top left. There's this new button, or it's a button that says new, all right? Now, this is a little confusing, and I like to tell my students this. Cited, for sighted people, it's called new. But for screen reader users, it's actually called create. So if you ever hear a sighted person say, click the new button, they actually mean the create button. I have no idea why Google didn't make them the same word, but they did. So uh, they didn't. So, um, but that's good for you to know. Um, and the, the reason why I want you to know that it's called the create button is because um, it's, uh, we use the C key to activate it. So just as we did GL and V, right? We're gonna just press the letter C to open up that create button. 
And what will happen then is a, a, a menu of all of the different things that we can create. And I'm going to show you that right now. So I'm going to turn on my speech. Full I'm going speech. to press that C button and, and I'm going to use my, my Alert, down from... arrow key to try to see, to show you what you can create in Google Drive. Here we go. So C. C, new button menu. Right. Press... It says new button menu. And then I have folder. Menu, file upload. To move a file items. upload, so you can upload a file from your computer. Folder upload. Folder upload, upload so you can upload a folder, a whole folder from your computer. Google Docs submenu, Google Sheets submenu, Google Slides submenu, right, more so submenu. Three most popular Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, and then you can use more to access all of the rest of uh, the Google Suite. So, for example, let's see if we, what's in there. Google Forms, Google Drawings, okay, so you get the Google idea. My so Maps. You have Google Forms, Drawings, My Maps, Sites, all the, all the ones that you might not use as much. But I'm going to go back to this. Um, I'm going to go left arrow, back to More my main menu. menu, and I'm going to go up to Google Docs because I'm going to just make a really quick sample Google Docs to show you guys. Google Slides, sub, Google Sheets, Submenu, and I'm gonna Google Docs, Submenu. Enter, okay, blank document. Me, do you want a blank document or... Do I want to from do a one template. from a template? Nine times out of ten, you're going to do document. a blank document. So I'm going to press blank document. Enter. Use virtual PC cursor off. Leaving and menus. Just a note, untitled notice dash how JAWS said use virtual PC cursor off. JAWS is super smart. Back in the day, three years ago, um, they wouldn't do that automatically. So it's really cool that JAWS automatically turns off that virtual PC cursor. But it's good for you to know because if, if something is not working, then, you know, that's we then you know what to do you can turn off that virtual pc cursor manually okay um sweet uh the one thing that i want to show you with creating a new document all right before we get into our do section where you can create your own document i'm going to turn off the speech here Space. There go. Speech on. um the one thing that i want to show you is how to make sure that when you create that document you are setting yourself up for success with your screen reader. Now, right now, if I tried to use my screen reader on this document, it wouldn't work. It would not work. And the reason is, is because screen reader support is not enabled, all right? We make sure that that screen reader support is enabled so the screen reader is ready to interact with our document. The and this is again the same if you're using um, JAWS, NVDA, or Chromevox, is Control, Alt, and Z. Now this is a modified key command, so that means we're holding down Control, we're holding down Alt, and pressing Z, and that should happen all at the same time, okay? So I'm gonna turn on my screen reader, uh, turn on my speech and show you that. Control, Full Alt, speed. Z. Alt, Control, Z, screen reader Super support easy. enabled. It's a screen reader support enabled, and if you can see up at the top, a new menu has been added to my Google Docs. It's the accessibility menu. Okay, now the accessibility menu is super useful. If you need to get there, it's Alt A, all right? Just like uh, you hold down Alt, then press A, and you can see all of the different features you have with your screen reader on Google Docs. This is for all Google applications like uh, Docs, Slides, and Sheets all have this accessibility menu as long as you have screen reader support enabled, okay? Now, as we go into our do section, Space. Speech. Speech on the um, you can guess that my challenge is going to be to create your own Google Doc and just create, uh, uh, turn on screen reader support and try to type something in the document. You know if you're successful, if you can type in the document and it doesn't just say blank, 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 blank. If you can type something and read it back with your reading commands, you're good. All right. If you are here for the Google questions, the question on this do section is what types of things might you be able to do from the accessibility menu? Remember, I said there's a whole new menu at the top when you turn on that screen reader support. What do you think you can do from that menu and why is it there, all right? So just give a couple of guesses and then actually after the do section, I'll show you kind of what's in this accessibility menu just real quickly. Um, cool. Leanne, anything, anything that uh, yes. people need to ask me? Um, when sure, I use Chromevox, it says new, why? Yeah, actually, you know what's funny is I noticed when I said that, or when I did it this time, they actually changed it to say new button, um, which is really great. Uh, uh, you still access it with the C. Oh, key, but Cody. Like, I think that's, that must be like a newer up because the last time I taught this, 
Oh, did I freeze? Can you still you froze. hear me? So what was the keystroke? Oh, okay. So it is C. It is the. It is still C. But I think that's a that's a new update. They relabeled it as the new button. Okay. And what was the key command okay. to get to the accessibility menu? It's Alt and A. Um, and sometimes, and it's this is a really weird thing that um, sometimes it's Alt A and sometimes it's Control Shift A. I don't know why there's a difference, but I, I've found that either one works. It's either Alt and A or Control Shift and A. Okay, and what was your question again? The question was, what types of things do you think might be in the accessibility menu? And we have a, just one right now. One person has guessed, I think you should be able to change the font sizes for larger print. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good guess. I like that. Um, okay, cool. Well, I guess we'll just keep rolling right along here, um, unless anybody else has any more guesses. All right, that was a pretty, that was a pretty quick and quick and dirty do section, right? Um, really. Ooh, you've you got know, more. A couple of They're things. coming oh, let's in. Hear uh -huh. let's hear so, them. color, contrast, mirror image, speak okay. different things about your document. Okay. Check your spelling. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. I'll, I'll actually, um, before we leave this do section, so if you're still doing the challenge, keep doing it. I'm just gonna show you guys what is actually in that accessibility menu. The accessibility menu is really only for, I see why everybody's like color and change the font. I see that makes a lot of sense, but actually the accessibility menu is only for screen reader support. So it's all of the things that you might need docs to do differently because you're using a screen reader. So I'll show you some of this. Full speech. All right, so I'll do Alt A. Alert from Alta menu accessibility. Night. All right, and we have Alert. a main menu and we have alternative menus. So our main menu it has, I'll just read them out to you speak, comments, footnotes, headings, graphics, Alert lists. From the All right, and if you go into those, it gives you different settings. So I'm going to show you the speak settings. All right. Speak as black. All right, and I'm going to use the right arrow key to get into my speak alternative menu. Speak selection as control. And there's speak selection, speak selection formatting of control, speak formatting, speak cursor, lo speak cursor location, speak word, speak word count. So all of the things that you might need to speak. You can also left back, uh, left arrow back into the main menu. Let's go down to um, what's a, what's one that I use a lot. Uh, let's go down uh, to table. Link table T black. Right. I'm gonna go into the alternative menu by pressing the right arrow key. Next. Oh, I don't know what I just did. View. Let's try that again. File access. Let's go down to table. Link table. Right arrow to get to ex um to the alternative menu. Next table and control plus alt plus shift plus previous table start of table list. And alert the beautiful from thing about the accessibility menu is if you don't know a key command, you can go into the accessibility menu, find what you want to do, and it gives you the key command after it. For example, Previous table P control plus alt plus shift plus P control plus alt plus shift plus T. Okay, so that's that gives you if you want to go to the previous table, you're going to do control alt shift P and then control alt shift T. All right, that, that, so that's kind of a modified layer key command. So that's a pretty complicated key command. So it's nice to go in there and look up a key command. All right. Finally, right. before we go on to the next teach section, I want to show you one really cool thing that um, Google has done for us. Alert. I'm going to press escape to get out of this oh, menu. Oh, don't escape yet. I got it. Or, well, I've got a question about the, doc oh, go for on, it. About the document. So let's make sure it's not in there. How do you sure. get to the untitled document field to be able to title it so you can find your file faster? Yeah, we're going to show you this. I'm going to okay. show you this in a second um, okay. because there's not, a, there's not an amazing way to do it. Um, there's Darn. actually two kind of ways to do it and it spans my two different teach sections. So I'll show you that in a second. Absolutely. Um, cool. But the, the, before I even get, that was, that's, uh, before I even get to that part, um, I want to show you before we kind of exit this document, um, I want to show you that Google has made a list of key commands for us when we have our sp screen reader support enabled by just doing control and slash. If you do control and slash a whole a uh, table of key commands shows up and it's all the key commands that you need to access that uh, Google application. So if you're in docs, it's all the Google docs key commands. I'm going to show you that right now. Full speech. All right. I'm going to hold down control, then plus press slash. Control slash. Oh, hold on. Control shift slash. 
well, they must have changed that key command. <laughs> what well, used to be control slash. Um, let me see if I can find it menu. real quick in the accessibility menu. Or um, yeah. Leaving menu. If I'll, I'll send you, I'll find the new key command to do that and I'll send it to you guys so you can put it on the, in the comments, but it used to be control, control slash, but yeah, great question. How do you get up Alert to the, from um, to the untitled document section? There's not an amazing way Alert to do this. From um, and if there is, I don't know about it. So if you guys are watching this and you're like, oh, I know the way to do that. Definitely let us know in the chat box. I would love, I've been looking for this for years, but the way that I teach my students to do it is to go to the Alert file from menu and then go to go shift tab back to the untitled document section. So that's the first way. So it's going to be alt and F to get to the file menu. Alt F, alert. From and then we're going to do shift tab back to untitled document. Leaving menu, Google, a share, private, open comment, alert, untitled doc, move, star checkbox, S, rename. All right. And then it's now it's in my rename alert. document from section. Okay. So that's the first way to do it. And then we're going to do, as we move on to the next teach section, I'll show you one other way to do this. Okay. Space. Speech, so on the speech off. Um, cool. So as we leave this document, we're going to be going to our last te teach section, which is going to be how to open documents. And, the, and it's really going to show you something called the action menu. All right. Now, before, now we need to get, we're right now in Google Docs. We're in a document. We need to get back to Google Drive. Now, the thing that you need to know about that is that we are in a totally new tab on the internet. If you're not sure about how to switch tabs, I'm going to tell you now that it's control and tab to switch between your tabs on the internet. So if I hold down control and then press tab and continue to hold down control and press tab, it's just like alt tab, switching your program focus, but we're gonna be going between tabs. I'm gonna show you how to go from your document through your tabs back to drive. All right, that's gonna be step number one. Okay, I'm gonna do that now. Full speech. All right, so I'm gonna hold down control and we're gonna do tab until I hear Google Drive. I.T vertical bar assistive technology, oh. TV eyes at home, part three, oh. colon remote and my drive dash Google drive dash Google. Awesome, so now I'm on Google Drive. I've just switched back. So my document is still open in that other tab, but I'm just back in Google Drive, okay? Now, what I'm gonna show you now is how to open that document that we created, all right? And the way to do that is with something called- Space, on, speech on the- Turn speech off. Um, is something called the action menu, all right? Now the action menu is just like the context menu everywhere else on your entire computer. If you don't know what the context menu is, um, it's what happens when you right click on something. When you right click, a menu opens up with all of the different options that you can do with that thing that you just right clicked on. The context menu is the same thing. The action menu is the same thing. So actually as a sighted person, to get to this action menu, all I would do is find the document that I wanted to, to use the action menu on and right click on it and this menu opens. And for, if, for those of you who are sighted that are watching this, you're like, oh, that, got it, right? That's the action menu. I'm gonna show you how to do this with a screen reader. And the reason why I wanna show you this with a screen reader, the things that you can do with it is we can open that document, we can rename it. So if, um, so if you didn't like the name that I changed it to, actually, I just changed it to the, to the letter S, probably because I was messing with the speech. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna rename it to something else. You can also move it somewhere else in your drive. You can do all of these different options. So it's a really powerful tool for you to be able to use. Cool? Awesome. So let me turn on the speech. What I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate. We're going to kind of bring it all together, right? Navigate to my list view, find my document. It's called S. Um, and then I'm going to use that action menu to rename it or I can open it. Okay. So let's do that now. So I'm going to turn on my speech. I'm going to Full navigate speech. to my list view. Remember that's G and L. It's a layered key command, G, L. G, L, main region, name, reverse, right, source, so direction, over region, or my list view. All right, and I'm gonna use the up and down arrow keys to find my document S, okay? Getting started, oh, PDF not... owned by oh, S Google Docs owned it. by me. So now I can, I'm on my document, I can open the action menu. Google makes it super easy. The action menu is A. That's it. You're just gonna press the letter A. A, context oh, menu to the navigate. They must've put a, a beautiful like name update recently because it used to be called action menu they called it context menu which is amazing because that's what it's called everywhere else on the computer and you have um, someone and who has use... said the update did some strange google things 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, I mean, it's funny because Google updates every two weeks. So it's like kind of like staying on top of a, of a raging bull, you know, <laughs> so it's <jello>. uh, <laughs> it is it's kind of yeah, it's kind of like that. <laughs> so um, so yeah, so now I have my action menu up, I can go down. Open I can with do sub open menu. with. And of course, I want to Google, Doc. Google Docs. That's the only option because it is a Google Doc. Or in my case, I'm going to rename it. I'm going to go Open down to rename. Share three of get shareable link for add shortcut to drive that move to six of four. add to start available offline oh, not rename nine of four. And you can see how many are really available in this action menu. I'm a presenter here. Enter. I'm, I Leave now it. have a dialog box open to let me rename and I'm going to call it test because T -E. I'm not feeling creative. Right? And then I'm going to press enter. And now Enter. it's renamed Me test. I can then use that action menu to open Alert. it or move it or do whatever I want. Okay. So for our final oh, get notification space. Speech 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 All right. Um, so our final teach section, I want you to or do section, I want you to rename your document and try to open it. All right. Use that action menu to rename and open that document. And my final, final, final thinking question. Perfect timing. My final thinking question is what other things do you think you might be able to do from the action menu? You just kind of heard a bunch of them. So definitely think back to your memory, but also just think about if you're trying to right click on something, what things might just be in that uh, uh, context menu or action menu? What do you think would be in there? Um, and I'll answer some questions now too. Okay, so how did you- And actually, oh, I'll go stop ahead. sharing my screen too. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm Absolutely. not sure if you need it for this one. Uh, yeah, go ahead. How did you go from the untitled section back into the document? Sure. So the one, the way to do that is to do that Alt F command again. If you just press Alt, actually, it'll go from the menu down to the document. So if you Alt will trigger it back and forth. So great mm -hmm. question. Okay. Um, is there a key command for a MacBook to ac activate screen reader support? Slightly it's different topic. Same. <laughs> it's always the same, it's, uh, control alt Z, but for MacBook users that are using voiceover, there's a couple of weird things that you have to do with like pass through commands. So I, and honestly, I'm not as familiar with voiceover for Mac as some other people. Um, so I don't know if I'm the best person to answer that because um, it's a little bit of a different animal. That's um, okay. Yeah. Um, it, to somebody, it's looking like when you're in your Google document, you are alternating mm -hmm. between Google commands and JAWS commands, especially in accessibility. Is that true? It's not true, but I am trying. Uh, so they're all Google key commands, but some of them are modified and some of them are layered. All right. So that's kind of, that's just the difference. So they're all Google key commands. Google has made all of these key commands but sometimes they choose to do modified key commands and sometimes they try to do layered key commands. It's just that Google does more layered key commands than modified key commands, but that's a great question. Yeah. And I guess at this point, um, that's pretty much all of the content that I have. So if anybody has any general questions about anything that we did um, or Anybody that chose to answer our last thinking question, what types of things you might be in the action menu or what you think might be in the action menu, I would love to hear those too. Sorry, I hit mute on accident. How did no, you okay. go from the action menu? Mm -hmm. how, how did you go from the list to the new or create button? That's a great question. You don't really go, you can, if you hit C, you can get to that new button from wherever you are. So if you're in the navigation area, if you're in this address bar, it doesn't matter. You can hit C and it'll, it'll bring you to the new button. So that's the nice thing about, about that. Yeah. Okay. How did you go from tab to tab across your window when you were going to the each browser tab? Yeah, that's control tab. So think of it as if you know how to switch your program focus to switch between programs, that's alt tab. The next level down is tabs, it's control tab. All right, so control tab, all right? Okay, Good does question. the action menu work for spell check inside a Google document like the context menu in Windows? That's a great question. No, the action menu or the context menu, I guess is now what Google is calling it. That only works within that only works the same way within Google Drive. So there is 
an element, I guess it's, it's hard because there is an element of a context menu inside a Google Doc, but it's a little bit different. It doesn't, you don't get to it with A, um, and it's mainly controlled through those menus at the top, if that makes sense. Okay, can you say again how you get from the tabs down into the document as you were going across the tabs? So yeah. If you're, yeah, um, you mean up in the menus down to the document? That might be what- I think yeah, so, yes. Makes, okay, so if you're up in the menus, you can use um, an alt command to go down. You just, just hit alt and it should drop you back down. I've had a lot of issues with that. That's the real way to do it, but I've had to mess around with it. I'm hoping that they get a more stable way to do that. But yeah, it's an alt command. So you're up in the menus and you press alt um, and you should drop down to the document. If that doesn't happen, the other, the other workaround is to just press tab, just tab, 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 and you should eventually get across the menus and down into the document. Okay. Okay. So a general question. So mm -hmm. it's important to turn off the virtual cursor in either NVDA or JAWS, but not to stop the program altogether in order to navigate around drive.google.com. Correct. correct. So in JAWS, it's important to turn off the virtual PC cursor. In NVDA, it's important to switch modes, but you don't turn off the program entirely. The way that I explain this um, to my students is like, imagine that um, JAWS is like when you have the virtual cursor on or you're in browse mode in NVDA, it's kind of the same-ish thing. Um, it's imagine that you're running with a, with a guide or you're walking with a guide, right? And they are right there with you. They're, show, they're guiding you where to go. And once you turn off the virtual PC cursor, JAWS or NVDA doesn't go away. They're just kind of watching from the sidelines and telling you where to go. If that's, that's a good, that's an analogy that I use. Um, uh, because we want NVDA and JAWS to still tell us what's going on, but we don't want them controlling the commands, if that makes sense. Okay. Do you have any key command help documents for using JAWS in Google Meet? Yeah, uh, in Google Meet. Meet. That's a great question. Actually, so the, the, the thing with, oh, did my, I think my screen froze, whatever. <laughs> Your screen froze, but I'm sure it'll come back in a minute. It's fine. Um, <laughs> um, so actually what you can do is, I, here, I'll share my screen, then you don't have to look at it. Um, what you can do is you can go up, if you're interested in doing JAWS um, or NVDA or Chromebox with any application with Google, any Google product, all you have to do is go to a new tab and type in, um, jaw or accessibility and whatever application so google meet right and what you should get is google has all of these resources for you it usually looks like this google meet accessibility google help support right and it tells you all of the key commands that are available or it points you in the right direction so here it's talking about live captions screen readers and magnification that's probably the one i want and that's really how i research this stuff that's how i figure it out um is i just google it so personally um, I think Google Meet only has a couple of key commands because it's recently become very popular. Um, <laughs> um, so it's only, only a couple of key commands, but really I'll tell you with Google Meet, um, beyond those key commands, you're really using tab and shift tab a lot, okay? So it's tab, tabbing through the meeting controls, shift tabbing through the key meeting controls. Um, if you're interested in Microsoft Teams, we're doing a webinar next Monday on Microsoft Teams and JAWS. Um, so if you're interested in that, then, uh, then absolutely tune in for that. Yes. And the Microsoft Teams webinar is meant for adults, but you students are welcome to join in if you want. We do have one person who has raised their hand. Jeanette, um, I turned on your mic. I'm not sure if you can access that, though. Nope. So I'll okay. lower her hand. Sometimes people click that. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. This has actually okay. been absolutely fabulous. So I, I really want to thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry that I'm all frozen um, for those of you who have to look at the side of my headphone. But yeah, that, I mean, it's been great. I think um, if you guys have any other questions, I'm always available via email. Um, it's Cody L at itvision.com okay, we'll and, and Cody I saw that you have a 
challenge going on for yeah. people as well. So yeah, what, yeah. what is that I, challenge that you have? So if you go to our website, itvision.com here, I'll show you, I'll share my screen again uh, real quick. If you go to our uh, website, itvision.com, um, at the very top, it kind of explains the challenge um, and it talks about how to, if you're a TBI or an AT specialist or somebody that's teaching this stuff and you need more support, we go through our kind of our introduction to screen readers um, uh, lesson, but through email, which is really cool because you get an email every day telling you kind of the next step that you need to do. And if you're really intimidated by JAWS, NVDA or Chromebox, it really takes the intimidation factor out of it. And we call it a challenge because we're actually giving away um, our free NVDA and JAWS cheat sheets, which are also available electronically on our website, but we're giving away a poster sized version of a cheat sheet for either JAWS, NVDA, or Chromevox if you post your progress on social media at the very end. So, so we're really excited about that. And um, if you're interested, again, itvision.com. It's E Y E T V I S I O N.com. Uh, yeah. So. Well, this has been really cool. So I, I definitely again want to say thank you. This has been, I've, I've learned quite a bit and I'm just watching along. Absolutely. So, <laughs> And I have all of these little pieces of paper with <laughs> scratch notes everywhere. <laughs> I wasn't thinking I was going to take so many notes, but I was furiously writing away. <laughs> yeah, Google, Google is a great tool and it's really something that as, as a TBI, I use all the time. So it's, it's um, definitely a great thing to, to use, especially as, as a screen reader user. So. And I think during this time period, we're seeing more and more schools adopting it and using it for their remote learning. So Absolutely. I can see that this video is going to be very popular on our archives. Those of you who are at home, if you want to see it again, it is posted on both Paths to Literacy as well as APH, APH's YouTube channel that we, we basically archive all of our past virtual academy shows. And Leanne has put that YouTube channel link in the chat window. So I encourage you to bookmark it and um, share this video with others. And I don't know if, about you, but I will be watching it again and pausing along the way to make sure that I get my notes right the next time. And thank you, Cody. This really was wonderful. It was so Absolutely. much information and so pertinent for this time period right now when we're using Google so much for our remote learning. So thank you. Absolutely. Tom tomorrow, Leanne and I have been with you all along <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we've been hosting and tomorrow we're actually going to be teaching. So join us tomorrow. We're going to do a math lesson on three dimensional shapes. A few things you might want to gather from your household. We do have two hand, three handouts actually. If you're able to print them and either cut them out ahead of time or have somebody um, with you help you cut them out or have scissors ready, we'll show you how to cut them out. That would be great. We're going to be building some three-dimensional shapes and we're also going to be sending you on a scavenger hunt. So if you have some time and you can hunt around your house and specifically look for cubes and also rectangular prisms. So cubes are like dice, for example, if you have that. Rectangular prisms are a little bit more rectangular like this tea box that I'm holding up. And we're gonna be talking about the attributes. So see if you can find some different things from around your house. Uh, you might wanna also collect some other shapes like some cones or some cylinders like soup cans or toilet paper rolls or party hats. But anyways, if you're able to gather a few different household items, we'll talk about their attributes and have a lesson with you tomorrow on math. So thank you so much for joining us today and we hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye for now, everyone. <laughs>